A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Why does some music give us the chills? While there are a few different theories on this, Dr. Indre Viscontis is in a unique position to explore this question. She holds a PhD in cognitive neuroscience and a master's of music and opera. As both a scientist and a soprano, she's been pondering this question for most of her life, and now she's finally onto something. You see, when I was a child, I remember one of my evaluations at the Royal Conservatory of Music. It'll always stick with me. I was a kid, I sang all my pieces. Well, I didn't make any mistakes. Uh, the judges said that my tone was very good, I, I had good technique, but my performance was deemed unmusical. I was devastated. How could these judges gauge my musicality? Couldn't they see that I feel and understand this music deeply? But the truth is that feeling the music and producing music that other people feel are two different skills. So what could science tell me about that? That's when my two worlds collided. Because after all, art and science are after the same thing. The goal is to understand the human experience. Science does it by extracting general principles about the world, and art uses individual experience to highlight what's universal. So here's what I learned in a nutshell. Your brain is primed to search for meaning, for patterns, in a random, chaotic world. We look for these things everywhere, and we've evolved in such a way that it's enjoyable when we make a new connection, when we learn something new, when we understand something meaningful. We find pleasure in it. When we hear repeated sounds and we know what they mean, we call it music. Speech becomes song just by repetition. In fact, repetition is the one quality of music that seems to be common across all cultures and genres. Elizabeth Margulis found that if you artificially insert repetition into these pieces, people find them more enjoyable, more interesting, more likely to be rated as having been composed by a human being rather than a computer. Why? Because repetition signals intention. It frames the pattern. It shows you that there's something meaningful here to listen to. But that's not enough to explain a human obsession. After all, music can cause riots, topple governments, raise the hairs on the back of your neck. What can science tell us about that? Well, it turns out that when your brain is enjoying a piece of music that might even give you the chills, it's awash with a neurotransmitter called dopamine. Now, dopamine, despite its widespread fame, has actually been undersold in many ways. People think of it as the pleasure chemical. But that's not all it does. A better term for it is the salience chemical. Because it's awash in some parts of your brain when you're trying to hold important things in mind, when you're nauseated, when you want something, when there's a meaning to be found. And the way that dopamine is awash in your brain while you're getting the chills from music is very specific to when and where it happens. There's a paper from Robert Zatori's lab at McGill with Valerie Salampour that documents these changes and showed me, finally, what it means to be musical. You see, even as a master's student, I was subconscious about my ability to sing musically. It was a bit like being cool. Everyone seemed to know what it was and how to do it, but if you even asked the question, it showed you that you weren't cool. I guess the fact that I turned to science for help puts the nail in the coffin on my coolness. <laughs> and even in the practice room, I would spend a ton, almost all my time, perfecting my high notes. After all, that's, that's what gets you hired, right? They come at the climax of the piece, they get the biggest reaction from the audience, and if you screw them up, they're the most memorable. <laughs> But my singing teacher would say to me, it's all the notes that are leading up to the high note that are more important than the high note, and that's what you should practice. And I understood that from a technical perspective, but not from a musical one, until I read the Salampur paper. Because, you see, in the Salampur paper, they show that there are two regions of the brain that mediate getting the chills from music, and they tracked dopamine in these regions. They're the caudate and the nucleus accumbens. Now, you can think of the caudate as your parent. It tracks how the things that you see and hear and observe and do have outcomes. 
It sets up the expectation of a reward of pleasure, and it ensures that in the future you will behave in such a way that you will seek reward and avoid the things that led to punishment. The caudate is awash with dopamine when you are leading up to the special moment that will give you the chills. But when you get to the moment that gives you the chills, there's a dopamine spike in your nucleus accumbens. In the 1950s, Olds and Milner stuck electrodes into the nucleus accumbenses of a bunch of rats. And then they taught those rats to press a lever, and every time they pressed a lever, they'd get a little electrical current that stimulates their nucleus accumbens. Those rats wanted nothing more than to press that lever. That's what I learned. That's what it means to be musical. You need to set up the musical intention for your audience so that they will pay attention. And then, as a musician, you use all kinds of tools once you've set up the tension to delay it, to delay the release. There's all kinds of musical tools that you can use to. Increase the desire, the expectation, the motivation for the reward. Because after all, pleasure is the death of desire. But the more desire there is, the better the pleasure. That's what I learned. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in San Francisco, California. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx San Francisco. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Visit our website at ted.com/tedxshorts. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening, and see you tomorrow.